Righteousness, peace, and joy. As our partner, we welcome you to today's broadcast and for taking the message of grace around the world through your support. Thanks for making a difference in the world today. Righteousness, peace, war, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Everybody sing righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Oh, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part of Oh, don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Come on. We glorify the name of God for this special opportunity we have to be blessed this evening again. This is your favorite program, Kingdom Life Half Hour, coming to you from your inspirational station, Echo 89.7 FM. This program comes up from 8.05 to 8.35 every Sunday evening and is brought to you by Kingdom Light Christian Center, also known as Praise Arena. My dear listener out there, God loves you, He cares for you. All you need to do, please, is whenever this program comes on, make up your mind that we apply this. I will follow this. And as you apply it on daily basis, you will receive miraculous results. You will get wonderful results, changes in every area of your life because the Lord has guaranteed your success. On his own part, our Father will never fail. All you need to do, all I need to do, is to act well my own part. Follow his teachings, and great will be your testimonies in Jesus' name. Amen. So, my dear brother, my dear sister out there, I congratulate you for being part of this program tonight. I'm Jumi Adetoye Lagunju, the minister on this program. I'm not alone in the studio tonight. I have with me my co-presenters. They are Sister Lua Fumilayo and Sister Onyinda Mola. Sister Onyinda Mola is a young adult. Uh, she's a teenager. Onyinda Mola, you are welcome to the program tonight. Good evening, listener. Thank you very much. With me as well is Sister Lua Fumilayo. You are welcome to the program tonight. Good evening, listener. Thank you very much. My dear listener out there, you know what I always tell people on this program is this. Look. When you apply this teaching, people will be coming to ask you, what is the secret of your success? And you'll be telling them, follow me to my Lord Jesus Christ. You'll be able to, you, you will become that living proof. The living proof that miracle is real through the wonderful changes that will be taking place in your life as you follow his teachings. You know, there was a time we had uh, uh, this question and answer from people and a family called from somewhere in Lekki out there. Incidentally, the family happened to be a Muslim family. And the person said, the allergy said, please, my brother, I thank God for this, your program. Every time this program, uh, program comes up, I get my children seated. My wife will all sit down and we follow it and we apply the teaching. And since we have been applying the teaching, my wife, my children, they have been having wonderful reports wonderful explanation, result of things happening in their life. Even the person said, let me quote him, that in our relationship as husband as wife, it's as if we have just gotten married after 15 years of turbulence in our home. It's not about religion. It's about a way of life, following the word of God, applying the teachings in what we do. And I'm so happy that the other account he gave was the children that used to abuse, say negative words to them, that they are wayward, they are this. Things have started falling in place in the way the children are also behaving and what he's doing. So that's why we always say on this program that Christianity is not just a religion, it's a way of life. When you apply all these teachings on a daily basis to what you do, you will see wonderful results. Imagine the, the one we had on your business, how you can apply God's teaching to it, and we look at the example of Isaac, how you went into mechanized farming, as against just being a peasant farmer out there, and how he was successful, and how he applied God's teaching 
to his attitude, the way he reacted, the way he related, he was relating with the opposition. Rather than being negative, he was positive that those people turned around to commend him and, and said he is serving a living God, a true God, based on the way he was relating with them. We look at the example of Joseph, how he had exemplary behavior out there, even in a disadvantageous position. He stood out with the right attitude and he succeeded. Could you realize that even at the time of Joseph, it wasn't a state of him being somewhere where they were preaching to him. He was living among pagans in the land of Egypt. He was 17 years old when he went there as a slave. And at the age of 30, he became the prime minister. Was there any church? Was there any fellowship? Nowhere for him. But because of the foundation that he had gotten from his parents on the word of God, that was what he was living on. He was applying and he would say, can I do this against my God? I'm, I can't do it against the Lord my God. And based on the teaching he has received as foundational principle, what happened was anywhere he found himself, he had the right attitude, the right behavior in the way he was behaving. Even in the prison out there, we are told that he was preferred above every other prisoner, that they committed great tasks to his hand, that the prison warder didn't even have to go and check what he was doing. He did it well in that little way out there in prison, in a disadvantageous situation. Yet, he had exemplary behavior. The Lord is telling you and I, irrespective of condition you find yourself, wherever you are walking, stand out. Have the right attitude, the right behavior, and success will be yours in Jesus' name. Amen. So having done that one, we move to the next level of how we are as workers out there, as subordinate, we are expected to work. We are expect, expected to be doing our things. That we looked at in the previous episode in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, where we are told as servants working for a master, we should do it as working unto the Lord. With good will, doing service as to the Lord, not unto men, not as service, that believing that the Lord is going to reward us. And we are told in verse 9 that even you masters do the same thing unto them for bearing threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is there respect of person with him. And God, our Heavenly Father will not look as if you are the boss out there. He expects you as a boss, as a master out there, to treat your subordinate, the people working with you with the fear of God, with consciousness of the world of God. That is what we have been looking at under our message, becoming the person God says you are. Your role and the right attitude in what you and I, in what we do. Your role and the right attitude in becoming what God says you are. So from the area, from the example of the masters out there, we looked at, we mentioned the story of Naaman out there. How Naaman stood out, a successful man, a great commander, and with all the success, the stories we had about him, he was a leper. And the challenges he had, the problem is that he had, was a con big concern to the servant, to the people working for him. They were concerned about it. You know some people, the way they treat their subordinate. When such masters have problems, you know what the someone serves him right? Is he not the one that has been treating us this way? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what thing concern us? Okwe kotoku. He can even die with the way he's behaving. That's the way some subordinate. We say that in the local language. But here are some subordinate that were so concerned about their masters. We are told that one of the servants who came in as a slave out there came in and said, ah, Master, please. You know what? We are so concerned about your condition. There's somebody that can, will have the remedy. There's somebody that will have the remedy out there. And after that uh, recommendation, he took that bold step. But when he got there, he felt, well, they're asking me to just go to the river there, Jordan and deep. I don't want to go. But we are told in verse 13 of 2 Kings chapter 5 that the others, the others uh, slaves and the subordinate out there came to tell him and said, Master, please. Go ahead and do this. This is a simple thing they ask you to do. See how concerned they are about the plight of their masters. And the message there is for you and I, my dear brother, my dear sisters out there. Whatever position has, the Lord has placed you, you continue to move higher and higher in Jesus' name. Amen. But it's reminding us, reminding you and I of something, that that position you are as a master, as a boss, you also have a master in heaven. And the Lord is saying, use me, Lord Jesus Christ, as the reference of your master. When you treat your subordinate, you, when you treat the people working for you with this consciousness, in the fear of God, I have reward for you and greater blessing for you in what you are doing. So let's look at a few verses in the scripture on this and see how the Lord is asking you to connect to this. In the book of Genesis, let's look at this briefly in Genesis chapter 24, verse 12, about 
about a servant. That's one of the servants of Abraham that was interceding and praying for the master. In fact, the way he was praying, the seriousness in which he carried out the task, you'll be wondering whether it's for him, for himself. And Matthew, before we even get to that chapter, just put a mark there, you will read it shortly. In chapter 18 of that same Genesis, verse 19, God was bearing witness about Abraham. God said this, For I know Abraham, that will command his children, and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord, and do justice and judgment, and that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. The Lord bore witness about Abraham that the way he will bring up his children, amazing, after him, with that godliness, God, the way of God, and the way he will even treat his servant, his entire household, with that consciousness of godliness, and the way he would relate with them to do justice, that's kindness, kindness, in kindness, the way he will bring them up. My dear brothers, my dear sister, the Lord is speaking to you and I tonight. What, what kind of commendation, what kind of remark, what kind of things will God say about us that I can vouch for him? The way he will bring up his children, the way he will treat his subordinate, the people working for him, for him, that I will treat them with the consciousness of God and kindness and relate with them. Will God say that concerning you? Will he say concerning me? That was what we saw about the account I have father gave about Abraham. Now let's see how it plays out here. Chapter 24. Verse 12, you can go ahead, please. Oh, Lord, God of my master Abraham. That is the servant of Abraham praying. Continue. He prayed, please give me success today and show unfailing love to my master Abraham. Continue. Verse 13, see, I am standing here beside the spring and the young, and the young women of the town are coming out to draw water. This is my request. I will ask one of them, please give me a drink from your jug. If she says yes, have a drink, and I will and I will water your camels too. Let her be the one you have selected as Isaac's wife. Thank you. Now imagine the the passion with which the servant was praying, praying for the server. I mean, for the son of his master to have a good wife. And he said, "Oh Lord, God of my master Abraham, I pray you send me good favor today and show kindness unto my master Abraham." intercessory prayer from a servant a subordinate for a master my dear brothers my dear sisters let me ask this simple question the way i treat my driver the way you treat your driver the way you treat your house the way i treat my my house or people working for me will they go behind and be praying for me that great things should happen to me interceding for me as a master or will it be the opposite in the way I treat them? What we are saying is this. We are not justifying every action from the subordinate. But we are saying in reference to the word of God, how well have we been treating them? Is it in reference to a master we also have in heaven? We should be conscious of the God factor in the way we relate with our co-worker, with our subordinate, with the people we are working with, even the way we relate with our boss or our, cl our clients. Let them see Christ in you. Your character, my character, should be the template they should be using to describe you as a Christian. They should be using my character, my behavior, to describe me as a Christian, not based on my denomination. And that is what the Lord is saying, that you will become the person he says you are through your own attitude, through my attitude, which is the role I'm expected to play. So my brother, my dear sisters out there, when you look at all these things and what the Lord says will happen, these are the reward, these are the success stories, things you will have out there. You know what? As you are planning it, people will be coming to ask you, what is the secret of your success? As you follow the teachings, the word of God, things will be happening for you automatically before you even know it. And you will continue to be successful in every area of your life. That's what the Lord is saying. That's what the Lord is saying concerning me. How about the area of marriage? How does it even affect my marriage? Amazing. A lot of people ask questions about this area. Well, you know, most pastors, we pastors, we hear a lot of stories. Especially when people come in with very big concern, heavy load. Their heart so weighing every lay because of the issue they are going through. And when they narrate their stories with a lot of passion, if one is not careful, you get so emotional and flow with them, especially when people start bringing the issue of enemy or somebody attacking from somewhere. But when you look 
in detail at what they are saying. Most of the time, it may not be the case of an enemy from somewhere. It may be the issue they have to handle on their own. We look at it in one of our messages. And one of them was even saying recently, I said, Pastor, please, you really need to preach to my husband. You need to talk to him. When you preach to my husband, there will be changes. Please, he needs the word. I said, amazing. I said, let's look at a place in the Bible. Let's look at this together in the book of First Peter, chapter 3. And by the time we finished, I told her, I said, look, who is supposed to handle the word? The changes. Because even my own preaching may not change your husband. He said, how come, pastor? I said, yes. Even if my changes, if he fails to change based, based on, my, uh, on my preaching, if he fails to change, you don't get the expected transformation. God says, the ball is in your hand. Change your attitude. Change your character. When you do this, you bring about the desired changes. He said, are you saying the word of God cannot change? I said, let's look at what the Bible says. Let's look at this together in the book of 1 Peter chapter 3. You can go ahead, please. Verse 1. Wives, likewise be submissive to your own husbands, that even if some do not obey the word, they without word may be won by the conduct of their wives. Thank you. Just pause a little. That The Bible says even if they are not won over by the word, by the gospel, by the, uh, by the message, through the conduct of their wife, through the behavior of their wife, they can be won over. By the time I read it to the person that came, he said, ah, pastor. I said, yes. You, you th you, the person said, I thought you were the one that was just quoting it and using some word to motivate me. I said, no, that is what Apostle Peter was using to address people out there in his letter, telling the women that had that challenges. And let's look at the next verse, please. Go ahead. When they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear. Verse 3, do not let your adornment be merely outward, arranging the air, wearing gold, or putting on on, fire, on fine apparel. Rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. Thank you. Just pause a little there. Now, this is where we have some challenges. A lot of people quoted this place out of context. And they use it to explain why women should not wear jewelry, why women should not dress there, don't do this one, because the Bible says so. No, Apostle Peter used it to describe that some women, why they think their husband will come to the house today and they would dress to kill the man must be able to notice me. Apostle Peter said, look, let your behavior, your character, the inner beauty be what you focus so much on. That when you focus on this, in fact, he will admire that beauty more than the external one. So when you focus on that inner beauty, the right attitude, the right behavior, the respect and honor you show to him, the submission, you'll be surprised that even if the pancake is not looking so great, the inner beauty is what the guy will be after. The Bible is not saying a woman should not look good. Unfortunately, when people now quote out of context, they will now use that one to substantiate. Please, it's wrong interpretation. But we are not talking about that tonight. We are looking at what the Lord says about how your attitude, my attitude, attitude as an individual will bring about the right changes the expected changes out there it's not just about women alone it's also, it, it, it also applies to men when you continue reading up to chapter 7 and up to chapter 9 where the law says as a man when you keep on living with your wife with understanding as with weaker vessel referencing them then your prayer will not be hindered you will have answers to your prayer. But tonight, we are not looking at about marriage issue. We just use that one to bring in uh, as a kind of example. Under the message, we are looking at becoming the person God says you are. Your role and the right attitude in becoming the person God says you are. Somebody asked me a question this week. And the person said, Pastor, please, what is the meaning of this proverb? Iwaloba awure. It's a Yoruba proverb. Iwaloba Awure. Let me translate it to English for the benefit of our non-Yoruba speaking people. It says, kindness as supremacy over voodoo used to conjure patronage for business or for success. Kindness, the right character, the right attitude as supremacy over voodoo used to conjure patronage or for success. You know, a lot of people believe that when they do Awure, which is like magical thing, that when they put it in their business, Things will work fine. They will get patronage. People will be trooping in and they will enjoy special favor. But the old adage from the depth of knowledge says when you have the right attitude, it is more potent, more potent than using juju to draw people to patronize your business. 
more potent, more powerful than using juju for you to succeed when you have the right attitude, the right character. Unfortunately, when people say such proverb, we do not do what the Bible says as in seller, pause, think and meditate on it, on this. So that's the meaning of Iwaloba Awuri. It's part of the Bible that is being paraphrased in the local proverb. Another one that we used to explain when we were counseling was Oberin so Iwano, Oni Lori Oko. A woman that lacks good behavior, that lacks good behavior, is prone to be unlucky getting a good husband. Or a woman that lacks good, be lacks good behavior kept on complaining that, how come I don't have a good husband? I'm not lucky enough to have a good husband. The recommendation is this. Check out your attitude. Check out your behavior. That is the place we read in the book of 1 Peter chapter 3, from verse 1 to verse 5, that we are told there that, Focus on that inner beauty. Focus on the right attitude, the right character. And by the time you do this, by the time you do the right thing out there, things will continue to fall in place. Joseph stood out in the scripture. He had exemplary character. He had the right attitude. He succeeded. He went from prison to palace and became the most celebrated man in the world at the time. We are the example of Isaac, the right attitude, succeeding even in the midst of enemy, and he loved them in return. We have so many examples uh, in the scripture, but time will not permit us to have tonight. But the example we are looking at next is you, is me. That people will be looking at me as the example to follow. The right attitude to succeed in my business. The right attitude to succeed in your business. The right attitude to succeed in your marriage, in your home, in everything you are doing. They are all contained in the word of God. And the question is this. What have you got to lose by following this our Lord Jesus Christ? You have got nothing to lose. Please, the appeal is coming tonight. Come to him. And we turn every adversity in your life to your advantages in Jesus' name. Amen. Where you are now, whether you're on the road, in a vehicle, or in your room, just say, Father, I'm ready. I'm sorry for what I've done in the past. The way you treat your wife, your husband, your subordinate, or your boss. And the Lord is saying, you have moved to the new level. And great will be your testimony of greater success in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have lost anything in the past as a result of wrong step you took in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I bring about total restoration of joy and happiness in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. If the mistake you made, the step you took, even brought about some ailments, so sick, some sicknesses into you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. By the balm of Gilead and the healing in the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. I declare total healing upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I thank you Lord for that you've done. For in Jesus Christ's name, I've prayed. Amen. For more information, you can link us through our website, praisearena.org, or through our producer, Taiwo Omoshule, Eko 89.7 FM, Latif Jack on the road, Agdingbi, Ikeja. Our email address is kingdomlifefamily at yahoo.com. You can also call us Call us on our telephone line 0909-328-9075. 0909-328-9075. So now Joseph has been a sound engineer on this program. Remain blessed. Thank you very much, my dear listener out there. Please let others see Christ in you, in the way you behave, in the way you relate. Christianity is not just a religion. It's a way of life. Let others see Christ in you. Be part of this program next week Sunday by 8.05. I'm Jumi Adeto Isho Lagunju. Remain blessed. Thank you for being a part of our broadcast. You can visit our website www.praisearena.org to listen to this message and many more. We are believing God for your blessings and for you to partner with us for continuity of this program with other outreaches we are involved in. You can write checks in favor of Kingdom Light Christian Center. Please visit our website for our bank account details for online donation. Thank you for your financial support. Thanks for making a difference in the world today. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Righteousness, peace, war.
and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Everybody sing righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Oh, righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part? Oh, don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Come on. Righteousness, peace, oh, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Come on, sing righteousness. 